Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond, welcome back to more Pico CTF. This challenge is called My First Sequel, the first challenge in the web category of level 2 here, 50 points. It says, I really need access to this website, but I forgot my password and there's no reset. Can you help? So we can check out the website, open it up in a new tab here, just like a regular forum login, username and password, so credentials we would otherwise have to know. But the hint here is, have you heard about SQL injection? So this is the first Pico CTF introduction to SQL injection, which is one of my favorite things. I think one of the coolest things for hacking on the internet and stuff like that. Um, SQL injection is tricking a backend web program into thinking that you are inputting data into a database that runs in the back. However, it's not real data that you're putting in, you're tricking it and that it's going to take some of that data and consider it to be code. So normally you'll see queries that are trying to insert or select data from a database. That's of the, the syntax and the style, select something, some kind of column or table information from a specific table where whatever column or field is something else. So if you get your own input that's kind of just being concatenated or added into the original query, there is significant potential for like bad things to happen. <laughs> That's a vulnerability if you are just concatenating those SQL constants in there, SQL literals. So this is kind of exactly what we can assume this website is doing. And if I wanted to just like log in with please sub and a password password, that's weird. Not, okay. <laughs> I don't know why that's not the regular login. That makes no sense to me. But whatever, we can inject something into this to determine if whether or not a user exists or not by getting a condition to log in that we know is always going to be true. Because this where clause in that SQL statement is running a test, it is running a conditional, where name is equal to something that we supply, but we can inject, hence SQL injection, some other code or SQL into that. SQL being the language, of course, it's being run in the background. Uh, I don't want to baby this up, but I know I, I should, in that some people are wanting to learn this for their first time of SQL injection. The magic thing, the very kind of like bare bones basic test that you'll see in like SQL injection challenges and, and, and tests of this is just determining can we get one thing that obviously equals another thing to return or to go through. Sometimes um, you don't know the kind of string or quotations that it's using to determine a string. It may be using double quotes or single quotes to denote their string, so you kind of have to fuzz testing which one you are trying to end because you're, again, concatenating in your input w inside of what we would expect to be a string. So you have to escape or end out of their string with a terminating quote, double quote or not, continue SQL code with adding a new condition or an or statement for this where, essentially an if clause or test clause, in another condition where something is equal to obviously itself. So that will, that will clearly return true. One is equal to one. But we don't know what is at the very end of this query, so sometimes we'll have to comment out the rest of the SQL code. And the way we do that again is dependent on the SQL that's running it in, in the background, like the backend database version. Maybe it's MySQL, maybe it's uh, Microsoft SQL rendition, SQLite, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they all have a different kind of form, so again, you'll have to fuzz and fudge that until you get something that, that will return a hit. So if we wanted to, we could simply try double quote or one equals one, and then a hashtag is what you'd expect for some MySQL versions. I'm just going to paste that in both the username and the password field because we don't know which one is vulnerable. We can go ahead and try and log in, but that doesn't work for us. So, okay, let's try with or one equals one, another pound symbol or a hashtag because that is what MySQL uses for comments. Try and log in with that. Oh, okay, we get an error with your request and it shows us actually the query that's trying to run in the background. You don't normally see this. This is, again, just for your learning capability in the CTF scene, Pico CTF is being nice to us, where it shows us what they're trying to use. They're using a single quote where user equals the start of our input. You see we have our single quote injected into it. So that's why the error is happening, because it's trying to interpret this or one equals one, but our hashtag is being weird. It's getting in the way because we now don't have a string that matches the rest of this password is in there as well. So maybe it's not this, the comments style, but we do know we are using single quotes for our string. So let's change that. Rather than using a hashtag, the Wikipedia page suggests some other things where you can use hyphen hyphen or dash dash to use a comment that you'd expect to see in SQLite. So let's try that. Again, I'm going to use it in the username and password field. And we log in. Welcome admin. 
flag, be careful what you let people ask, and the hash that should be different for each one. So we logged in as admin because we got an immediate return, an immediate truth in our condition where one equals one or one equals one. So the first thing that we return is the very first row in the table that we're looking at, likely admin or usually admin. So cool immediate login. We've got our flag. If we wanted to, we can script this and I'd showcase that in another video, but I don't think it's necessary for this one. We can paste that in and we can jump up on the scoreboard 50 points. Super cool. That's SQL injection. I will, however, want to take a note of that as our flag because I think that's good practice. Certainly writing a get flag script would also be good practice for it, but Whatever, I digress. If you'd like me to, we certainly can. I'd use some Python requests, use regular expressions to pull out the flag, and we'd be grooving. Special shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. I love you. That was weird, sorry. A $1 or more on Patreon a month will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of our video. $5 or more on Patreon will give you a special uh, access to a folder on Google Drive that I like to upload my early access videos. Well, I include all the videos that I have recorded but not yet released on YouTube because I normally record in bulk and let YouTube gradually upload them on a, on a scheduled basis. So if you want to not wait, you want the content right when it's ready, uh, that's the best way to do it, just $5 a month on Patreon. If you did like this video, please do press that like button, maybe leave me a comment if you're willing to subscribe. That would be awesome. Link in the description to join our Discord server. It's a cool community of CTF players, programmers, and hackers. If you want to hang out with me or some other awesome people, that's the best way to do that. Hope to see you guys on Patreon. Thank you, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!